Hi, this is Susan Petty Baylor. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in West Hartford, Connecticut in the United States. Um, I've had a lot of questions over the last several weeks about how to adhere vellum to a card front or a project without the adhesive showing through and being unsightly. So I wanted to cover a few tips and tricks on how to do this, as well as talk about some other ways to add vellum to your projects that maybe you haven't thought of before. So let's head over to my stamp table and let's get started. Okay, so like I said, one of the trickiest things about vellum is adhering it to your project without having the um, adhesive show. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, my youngest daughter asked me to make her some wedding cards. She had some friends that were getting married. And, you know, we went back and forth about what she wanted. And this is what she ended up with. But in the interim, I was trying to talk her into something a little more um, subtle um, by using a vellum overlay. I thought that this looked really pretty. Uh, kind of softened this really bold floral. Of course, you know, she's young and <laughs> she liked the bold floral. But in any case, I wanted you to see the difference between these two cards. So this one is, you know, just the card stock and the designer paper and everything up front. This, on the other hand, I'm using a piece of vellum to overlay um, and then I've glued my focal point onto my vellum. And you can see this is what happens when you glue on vellum. The adhesive shows through. So what do you do? Well, in this instance, oops, I'm going to take another piece of mint macaron cardstock. I used the um, these sweetly st or stitched so sweetly framelits, uh, this third from the largest one, to cut out this particular shape. So I'm just going to take another one, same color, and I'm going to glue this to the inside, to the back side. And I'm just going to look at the front and make sure that I've got it all lined up. So even though you know, normally your recipient wouldn't flip the card up. If they did, um, they would see a finished backside of vellum. So then, how do we adhere this piece to here? Um, one of the things I like about this style is that this piece is loose. It's a flap. You could glue this vellum to your card front without adding this piece and just put your adhesive on the back here and glue it directly to your card front and you would be done. And that would be perfectly fine. I just liked the idea of having a loose panel. So what I did was I took some tear and tape. Of course I can't find it. It's here on my table somewhere. As usual, it's a bit of a mess. Um, I instead of cutting this at um, four and a quarter by five and a half, I cut it at I cut it four and a quarter by five and three quarters, and added this little piece of tear and tape to the back. Obviously, I scored it also, and then I'm just adhering that. So that is, you can see where I cut out my panel from here. So that's nice and secure. And then I'm going to take this whole panel and I'm going to mount it onto the front of my card base. So let me just zip around here real quick with my adhesive. Nobody's ever going to see that. Unless they watch this video, they'll never know I did that. And then you have your finished card with this little vellum overlay that I just think makes it look 
softer than this one. Both pretty, but this I just thought was softer. So then what do you do about the greeting? A couple things. You could leave this like so and just stamp a greeting inside. The other possibility is if you, you know, if I stamped a greeting, now on this one I, uh, emb I stamped and embossed in black. Um, I don't know if you can see the shine in the camera, but it's a little bit raised and just makes it look a little bit more elegant. Um, I could do that on this cardstock or I could just stamp with regular stays on ink. And if I stamped congratulations on to a piece of vellum, this is what it would look like. So I'm gonna be brave now that I've put this card all together. And I'm gonna use my stays on and my congratulations. And I'm going to stamp on my card front. Now when you're stamping on vellum, if you're stamping on the front of vellum, you cannot use regular die-based inks. You have got to use something such as stays on. This is um, fast driving, a fast drying solvent ink. I'm going to stamp it just a little bit up from the bottom because if I recall correctly, it needs to be trimmed along the bottom edge because it was just a hair long. And when you stamp with vellum or with uh, stays on, you want to clean your stamp immediately. It will stain. You used to be able to use stays on cleaner, but with the new uh, cling decals that are on the stamps, if the stays on cleaner gets on this surface, um, it will ruin the stickiness. It will no longer be sticky. So just know that stays on may stain uh, your red rubber stamps uh, if you don't clean them right away. Even if you do clean them right away, it's, it's very possible that it's going to stain over time. You could use stays on cleaner on the red rubber. If you do, you would want to, let me just grab my bottle of stays on cleaner comes like this and of course this is well used the top was white originally and you would want to very carefully tap that on there and clean it off on your you know your scrubby pad and then clean the stamp again with um, stamp and mist to get all the residual off from the stays on cleaner you don't want to leave that behind on your um, on your red rubber because over time it will degrade the red rubber. So I'm just vigorously scrubbing over here and you can see that it's nice and clean. You just want to be careful that you don't get anything on this surface. And I'm going to put it on the other side of my block just to make sure that I don't have any spatter. So anyway. So this is one possibility for vellum. Another possibility is to use a piece of vellum cardstock as your entire card base. So this is a piece of vellum cardstock. It's cut at four and a quarter by 11, just cut in half. And then I scored it across the top. And again, you can see the back of my panel. So I'm going to use the same trick that I used on this last card. And I'm going to take this piece of lovely lipstick, retired lovely lipstick, and I'm going to put it on the back of the vellum. Okay. So now when your recipient receives their card and they open it, they've got this finished backside. But where do you write your message or your greeting? So I have a couple of more panels 
cut out again from stitched so sweetly and I am going to very carefully line this up and then close my card so you still can't see that from the front but you have a place to write inside but again not attractive on the back so we're going to do the same thing Let me use this side it's a nicer side i love these framelits they have this really cute stitched edge as well as the scallop and i think it really dresses up the um oops the die cut and i thought for a wedding card this was very appropriate so now I have a card it's perfectly fine just like this um, I could stamp congratulations down here at the bottom I could put I could stamp something in here I actually had one of these panels where I stamped happy anniversary um, could do that and then write my message basically just sign mine and my husband's name and um, send it off and then on the back, this gives me a place to um, stamp my, you know, made by Susan um, stamp. Or to, you know, just sign and date your card so that you have a record of who made it and when. Okay. There are two stamp sets that are part of the suite. The painted poppies, which is this one, and then the painted label dies, coordinate. You can see this is where I keep all my extra pieces. These are the painted label dies. And then Peaceful Moments has the Poppy Moments dies on the inside. And that's all these. So, so when I cut this piece out, I used some adhesive sheet, sticky sheet, we used to call it. And I'm just going to lay this right down on top of that die cut. And then I th when I, if I want to glue this piece down, I would have to keep my adhesive on the inside here. I could have a little bit on the outside edges, but quite honestly with vellum, I don't mind if the edges aren't perfectly tacked down. How do I want this? I think I want it like this. And I also, I'm going to stick some leaves under there. So I want the edges to be sticking up. I think right about there. And then I'm going to put this piece down here, but I think I want it up on dimensionals. So I have some mini dimensionals here, and those I'm going to just put right, whoops, hmm, you know what, I think I'm going to have to cut them, here's a half a piece, I really don't want that to show through. So there's a half, and I want another half. So I'm going to cut that one. I think I can use this bigger half. Yep. And I stamped this with Happy Birthday from Peaceful Moments that I showed you just a couple minutes ago. I seem to use that Happy Birthday quite a lot. I really like the script and I like the mixed font. There we go. Oops. So being buggers to get off. Alright, so I'm just gonna have this back here and then I wanna stick these leaves over here. Kinda like this. But I don't want The um, 
stems to show through. So I'm just clipping them off. And then I'll stick that here. Clip that one. Put a little glue on the back. And I want that kind of down like so. So now you have this cool effect of the vellum being part of the flower. Let me move that just a hair so you can't see it. Um, and you can see, you know, a little bit of the designer paper through the background. I think that's a really cool effect. So I have a friend that I'm going to send that to because her birthday is in just a few days and she's going to get this in the mail. Another quick and easy way to adhere vellum is to uh, use liquid glue and a piece of a sponge. This is a piece of, um, you know, these sponges come um, in a three pack and I usually just um, first quarter them and then cut the quarters usually again so that I'm, I'm cutting them into eight pieces. Anyway, you just dab in the, uh, the glue and then tap on the back of your vellum and then go ahead and, and glue that down. Um, and because it's such a, a light coating of glue, you're not gonna see that through the vellum. You just have to be careful to keep it uh, down to minimum, but it actually is quite secure. And I'm gonna tuck this under here. I've already cut off the little stems. Okay, and that's yet another way to uh, tack down vellum. You just have to give it a minute or two to dry. But that, that's really secure, and um, you could do that with an entire, um, you know, a piece on an entire card front as well. That works beautifully. And just keep that sponge in an airtight container. Um, I've used this probably for about six months. I would say at least six months to a year. Um, if it gets too uh, rigid, you could, you know, toss it and use another tiny piece of sponge. I believe this pack of three sponges is three dollars. Pretty inexpensive. So, all of my customers, if I know your your birthday, I will send you a birthday card. So, if you're a customer of mine, make sure that you let me know your birth date and I, you don't have to share the year just the month and day and i will send you a birthday card on your birthday so this is a stamp this is from the um, ornate style i used this large uh, floral image um, i stamped in stays on again in black stays on and when i colored this i used my regular dye base markers um, what did I use? I did not use that one. I used Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, Flirty Flamingo, Melon Mambo, um, Bermuda Bay, and is this Mango Melody? Yes, Mango Melody. So I used that to color all the flowers and the leaves. And then, I'm not sure if you can see the glossiness, but um, in a few strategic places on the back side of the vellum, I put some glue dots. Um, when you're coloring, when you're coloring vellum, um, especially if you're using a dye-based marker, a water-based marker, you need to color on the back of the vellum. You know, vellum is kind of a plasticky cardstock. It's not paper, and so if you color directly on vellum. it rubs off. And so you get this smeary mess. You can let it dry. It will take a few hours. Um, it could still rub off. You can hit it with a heat tool to um, speed up the drying. I still don't trust it. So anytime you're going to 
color on vellum, you want to color on the flip side, and then, um, and you, you know, you're coloring this all in the back. So this is the side that I colored. And when you turn it over, it's just a little bit more muted. I'm not sure if you can see the difference. So I've got a few, like I said, glue dots strategically placed. And I'm just going to mount it on the front of this piece of Whisper White that I have on another piece of Bermuda Bay. And then this is going to go on my card front, like so. A great thing to do with vellum is to emboss it. Uh, but it gives this cool, you can use either side, but it's this cool kind of white textured look to it. Let me just show you how this looks pretty cool, just like that, to add it as a layer to this card. I really like the look of that. I think I like that better than um, without. I think it gives it more interest to have that extra layer of embossed vellum in the background. And again, you could use either either side. Okay, there you have it. And I embossed this piece with the Magnolia embossing folder, and I colored on the back with um, regular water-based markers, and then I can just mount this to the front of my card, just like this. Um, I colored this a while ago. I'm just going to put a few, and it's obviously it's dry because it's been several days. So I'm just going to put this, I'm going to put a few glue dots in a few strategic places to hold this down. I like to pick up the glue dots directly with my cardstock. I just take my cardstock directly to the glue dot and then press it onto the dot and it picks it up off of the roll. That way they stay nice and flat. And I'm just going to center this. And that is a, a super simple, quick and easy card. Embossed a piece of vellum, colored it very quickly on the back, mounted it to the card front, and it's very cool. I would stamp a little sentiment down here. I have, whoops, sorry, this happy birthday that I stamped a while back. I like this. This is, I believe it was Gorgeous Grape on Purple Posy. Or I could put that up there. That's kind of cool. So that's, like I said, quick and easy card. This is from the new um, Joy Framelits. It's um, part of the Peace and Joy stamp set. And these are the framelits. And these words, this is the joy. So this is the fine line of the uh, that was shaded spruce. I used this one to cut out um, kind of a, a smaller shadow in um, mint macaron. And then I used a piece of vellum to cut out an even larger shadow from for the uh, for the joy as well. So I thought that was a really cool idea. I might use something like this on a future Christmas card. Who knows? I know I'll have to make some cards for my husband. He likes peace on earth cards, and this has got joy, peace, and bright. So. Peace was the main reason that I bought it, because um, I was thinking of him. Okay, well, I think that's it for 
vellum ideas and techniques. There are lots more out there. These are just the ones that I could come up with um, at the moment. Let me just show you all the different examples from earlier that we have. Um, other ones, I have that one, I have this one. So we've got a lot of different ideas going on here, a lot of possibilities. Um, so I think that is it for now. If you liked this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. Um, and you can hit the subscribe button and um, the little bell icon next to it. And YouTube will notify you anytime I upload a video and you won't miss anything. So, okay. I think that's, that's it for now. Um, happy stamping.